So I thought I would start a new segment here on the channel. Uh, I don't know, I might call this like DJ Coffee Talks or something like that. Um, but I just wanted to do something a little bit more informal about uh, the life part of DJing or just thoughts in my mind regarding DJing other than the, the technical side and the tips and tricks that I usually share on this channel. So I think this first installment of this new series is going to be about uh, what it means to be a DJ in 2022. Um, there was a discussion on uh, DJ Twitter this past weekend about uh, kind of sparked by uh, a tweet by Miles Medina. I'll go ahead and uh, put the tweet right here, I guess, um, about how he would rather lose the room but play a bunch of new stuff or things that he felt connected to rather than playing music that um, would keep the room that people are more familiar with and um, maybe not are his favorites. And I have kind of two frames of mind to this. Um, as DJs, we are artists. Um, we are creative. It's, I mean, part of what we do as DJs. But there's so many different facets to DJing, right? You could be a club DJ. You could be a mobile DJ doing like, um, you know, weddings and stuff like that. You could be a, a corporate DJ doing like private events for uh, large companies. There's such a wide range of things you can do as a DJ. I think that it's very important, especially now coming out of the pandemic and more DJs are getting back to work where we discuss and we really think about what we as individuals, as DJs, as creatives do and what we want to do with DJing. Um, I myself, my bread and butter is over the last however long I've been uh, professionally DJing at this point has been, you know, party rocking club DJing. Um, it's what I've kind of um, cut my teeth in as far as the DJ world, starting from doing small house parties to doing college parties to doing smaller bars to now doing you know large nightclubs here in Las Vegas. Uh, and I, I'm blessed to do it. I'm blessed to do it. Um, but also being actually like friends with uh, Miles Medina, I can say too that I'm also, at the same time, part of me is jealous of the freedom that he has as a DJ. And I don't mean jealous in a negative connotation. I mean like, like jealousy, like man, that's cool, that's dope. That's something that I aspire to do. Where he's positioned himself through his immense talent. I don't think it's, uh, I think it's undeniable at this point how talented Miles is as a DJ and many other DJs. Um, another one I can specifically call out is another friend of mine, uh, Spider Tech. Those two are some of the most talented DJs that I've ever had the privilege of DJing with, if not the two most talented DJs that I've had the pro privilege of dealing uh, DJing with. Sorry. Um, I think 
through their, their talents and their willingness to push the boundaries of what a DJ set should be and sticking to their guns have put them in that position to be able to do that and that's what they're known for. Well, I have spent years working on my craft and I can say, not egotistically, that I'm a pretty good, if not decently good, uh, club DJ and I can definitely hold a room and I can definitely make a great night for a large amount of people. But over the years, I'll say that I've fallen into the traps of what I would call laziness at this point, just kind of playing it safer and playing it safe because I know, okay, I might not like this song, but I know this will work here in this room and I know I'll get the reaction and get the people excited, dancing, singing along, whatever the case is. And I think back about when I first, especially when I first got here to Vegas, that I, I wanted to push the, the boundaries like that, like a Miles, like a Spider Tech, where I'm, I didn't want to be comfortable. I didn't want to just do, not just the bare minimum, because I don't just do the bare minimum per se, just playing one song into another. Um, but I wanted to take those chances. And as time progressed, as my career has progressed, um, and as I reflect back on it more, I'm noticing that I'm taking less and less chances because I know the formula. I know what's gonna work. I know what might not work. I've been thinking about that a lot lately, especially after um, the discussion started by Miles' tweet. And I gotta say, it's still the beginning of this new year and I'm not gonna be okay with that moving forward. I wanna get back to where I was and being able to be okay with taking those extra chances that I still take chances during the night, but nowhere near to the level or caliber of frequency of what I did before. Maybe that's because I feel like I have more to lose now, now that I've you know gotten bigger, um, gotten more gigs, um, pushed my rate up more, gotten into bigger rooms, um, but I need to just not be playing it as safe. And I was thinking about it and deep down, I think I was willing to take more of those chances because I felt more confident in my DJing and maybe it was just the, me being naive about it and not knowing how much it might affect the room. But taking those chances and just thinking to myself, oh man, Whatever it is, if I lose them a little bit, I can always get them back by doing this or this or playing this, these couple songs in a row and get the room back. As I reflect back on it, I, I think it's a little bit of fear of losing the room in those, those more higher profile situations. But also too, I think it's just the fact that I know after being in those rooms, in bigger rooms long enough that there is, as time has progressed and time has moved on, the crowds have less and less patience for not hearing the songs that they want to hear right at that moment. But I gotta stop being scared. I'm telling myself this right now and I'm, I'm, I'm documenting this, especially here in this, this first um, episode of this new series. I'm gonna stop being scared. I'm gonna take those chances and I'm gonna do what deep down inside I wanna do and play the kind of tracks that I wanna play in certain situations and just get back to feeling more free as a DJ. And I think that's important. Now this is just me and my situation and this is just thoughts I had because of uh, Miles' tweet and the conversation that was started. But I think every DJ can take something away from this. Don't be afraid to take the chances in whatever field of DJing or whatever n niche of DJing you might reside in, don't lose that spark of creativity and that fearlessness that you might 
have lost just being in the game as long or as short as you have been. Take those chances and feel confident in yourself and knowing your craft that you can get out of what Whatever bad things might happen, you might lose the floor, you might lose a couple people, a couple people might not be happy because you're not playing what they're used to hearing, but just go for it. Whatever you do as a DJ, remember that the soul and heart of this is creativity, and that shouldn't change. And playing it safe 100% of the time is just a recipe for burning out and losing a love for something that's so special in so many people's lives that have affected and touched so many people. I think back to as many gigs as I've played over the years and as many people that I've made smile or made happier or made their weekend or whatever the case is, the amount of people that have said, good job, great job, yo, you killed it. All of those people have been affected by my art. And I'm sure the same can be said for hundreds, thousands of you that watch these videos. If you're a DJ and you've played in front of crowds, I can guarantee out of all the gigs you've played, out of all the times you've played in front of people, you've affected somebody, you've changed that person in that moment. And if we play it safe 100% of the time, that change and that positive influence we put out into the universe kind of goes away a little bit. Take those chances, take those risks. Be a little bit more fearless. And I'm sure that in the end, you won't regret it. All right, back to work.